welcome to AquaTalks Online, hosted by the Estates at Aqualina. Before we begin our presentation, I wanted to share our latest construction news with you. We are only 15 weeks away until the boutique tower for the Estates at Aqualina tops off. Our South Tower has already topped off, as well as Villa Aqualina, our incredible amenities building, which will have ice skating, bowling lanes, a movie theater, and so much more for our residents. The Estates is on track for the South Tower to be completed in summer 2021 and the Boutique Tower in 2022. We're now one step closer to completing the Estates at Aqualina the world's finest residences. Again, thank you so much for joining us for AquaTalks. This is our forum to connect, share ideas, and cover topics that are important to all of us. I am your host, Alexandra Wensley, Vice President of Communications for the Aqualina brand. Today on AquaTalks, we have business owner and entrepreneur Tom Maoli who joins us from New Jersey. Tom is also a real estate developer, new car dealer, and branding expert. He's the former founder of a global logistics company. He's been a frequent guest on Fox News, has appeared on Inside Edition, CNN, CNBC News, and the BBC. He is also the host of Tom Maoli Go Big or Go Home radio show on iHeartRadio, WOR 710. Tom gives listeners the motivational tips and discusses topics including wealth building tips, investing, and real estate. Tom is also part of our Aqualina family and has a home at the mansions at Aqualina and is one of our new buyers at the estates at Aqualina. Today, Tom will talk to us about the state of the economy and how it affects the real estate industry. Please help me welcome Tom Maoli. Hello, Tom. How are you? Hi, good to see you. You also, good to see you. Wow, I thought I had a cool backdrop. Look at yours. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you are welcome. So Great. I'm going to turn this over to you. Great. Um, and I'll be back at the end for Q&A. So everybody who's listening, please put your questions in the chat or the Q&A section, and I'll address them when I'm back at the end. Excellent. Excellent. So obviously, full disclosure, I want to tell everyone, as previously said, I am an owner at the Aquina Mansions. Absolutely love it there. We'll get into that. We'll talk about that. Um, I'm in the process of purchasing at the Aquilina Estate, which is very exciting. It's an, inc it's an incredible, exciting property. And um, I'm also a member of President Trump's finance team. So I am politically involved. Um, I want a full disclosure that obviously everybody watched the debate last night. We're, you know, we're in an interesting time in the world and the economy. You know, we're in an election period and, and there's, there's, you know, we're subject to a lot of changes. And, you know, listen, 2020 was an interesting year, not only for real estate, but for business. And, you know, we COVID-19, I mean, every single person had to deal with COVID-19. We're still dealing with it. You know, as realtors, you know, you're dealing with the challenges of how do you sell properties? How do you show your customers properties? How do you get listings? Because people don't want to have you in your home because they're afraid of COVID-19. You know, we had major, major layoffs, furloughs, job losses, um, people with no income and no ability to get financing and banking. But as, as the world turns and, and the American economy always comes back, we're in an up cycle, whether or not President Trump gets in, whether or not uh, President, uh, uh, Vice President Biden gets in, we're in an up cycle. And, you know, people are concerned about what happens if Biden gets in and, and Trump doesn't get in because we had this great economy prior to COVID-19. And, you know, how, what's going to happen if, if President Biden gets in and, and the Democrats get in and they're going to change the economy and, and they may clearly raise interest rates and taxes What's going to happen? Well, I think, you know, as, as, a, as a businessman and entrepreneur and 
a real estate investor of, of my own, you have to look at history and history repeats itself. You know, under the democratic rule of Bill Clinton, we had one of the greatest economies in the history of the country. Yes, they spent a lot of money. Democrats spend. They'll get the infrastructure bill put in place if, if, if Biden gets in. Things will start rolling again. Infrastructure will be put in place. And, and the stock market will continue to rise. There's trillions and trillions of dollars that are on the sideline, especially with COVID, that people pulled out. They need to invest it somewhere. They need to put it into an investment. You can't just park money in a bank anymore at, at 1% and pay tax on that. You have to put it to work and you have to invest it somewhere. And there's, a, you know, historically, there's only two inflation hedges in the history of America since Alexander Hamilton created the financial system that work. And one of them is the stock market. And the second is real estate. Real estate has been the greatest hedge, uh, inflation hedge in the history of this country. So, you know, when you talk about realtors and selling properties, you know, there's 2 million real estate agents in the United States of America. 67% of those are women. You know, there's 701,000 homes that were sold in 2019. You know, our, our, our inventory is short. We're in a cycle right now where uh, uh, housing is short. There's you know, we need more inventory. So, so as a realtor, I think that, you know, most realtors are in a, in a position to strike right now, line up their clientele, get their listings, get their, get their uh, properties out on the market, and people are paying premiums. You know, it's interesting. In New, and obviously, you're in a Florida market, but in New Jersey right now, people are fleeing from New York. They're fleeing from the major cities because of COVID. And they're, they're bidding on properties. There's bidding wars going on. And I was just down in uh, Miami this past weekend at the Aquilina Mansions, one of my favorite places in the whole world. And, you know, I, I was talking to some people there, and the same thing's going on in Florida. There's bidding wars for homes. They come on the market and they sell immediately. You know, we're, we're, why? Well, number one, you have people that are fleeing from areas. They, people want safety now. They want their families in a safe environment. They want a swimming pool in their backyard. They, want, they, they don't want to get on an airplane and travel. They want to be in an area, in an, in an environment where they can enjoy the time with their family, be safe, still social distance, get out into the world and start living again. And, you know, this may sound like a sales pitch, but Yakuina is one of the, one of the best places, you know, on, on, uh, on the Miami Strip to, to do that. I mean, you know, when I started uh, researching properties, I, I originally had a home in Palm Beach and I was on South Ocean Boulevard, one block south of Mar-a-Lago. And fabulous piece of real estate, I incredible, incredible location. But, you know, I, I decided I was going to sell that and I was going to come to North Miami. Uh, my kids wanted to be where there was more action and restaurants and things going on and more nightlife. And, and, you know, I took a weekend out and I went from the tip of Miami all the way up through Sunny Isles and I saw 60 properties. And when I got done seeing 60 properties, the last one I saw was the Aquilina. And when I walked in, it was, it was like, it, it took my breath away. It was like home, it, you know, and, you know, I'm in the service business. I started a global logistics company in the early 80s and grew it. I had 750 warehouses around the world. I serviced field engineers with um, on-site critical spare parts for uh, medical and technology companies. And, and we had to be on-site in four hours and two hours and make sure we got those parts to those engineers so they could fix the computers, fix the medical equipment so that the, the, these businesses could keep up and running. And we did this globally. But you know, when I got out of that business and I sold that, and I was always in the real estate business, I, I, I got into the car business and you know, I took a car business and I turned it into a hospitality business. And everybody said to me, you know, I, used to, I would go to meetings with Lexus and BMW and Mercedes Benz and they would say to me, how, how do you do the sales that you do? And how, is, how are your service departments booming like they are? How did you turn these dealerships around? And, you know, I kind of joked with one of the uh, executives from Lexus and I said, I'm not going to tell you because then you're going to tell everyone else. But 
what it really is about is hospitality. We're in a hospitality, when you're in a service business, you're in a hospitality business. Just, you're in a real estate business, you're in a hospitality business. Your job is to service that customer and make sure their needs are met, be there on time, be there when they're available, not when you're available. And when it comes to hospitality, the, the Aquilina is, it, it, there's none better. I mean, when you walk through the Aquilina and every single person that works for that that uh, residence touches you, and I don't mean physically touches you, ask you can, you, can I help you? Ask you, can I get you a bottle of water? Ask you if there's anything that you need. Carry your bags up to your, to your, to your door. Help you move furniture around. Change light bulbs. That's hospitality. That's hospitality. When you go there and you realize that you're important, you mean something to these people, that's hospitality. And that's, that's part of my success, and that should be part of the success of the realtors that are out there selling these properties because at the end of the day, anyone can pick a real estate agent from anywhere. You could pick up the phone, you can go online and find a real estate agent anywhere. I mean, I, I don't wash my own cars because I own car dealerships, but you know, you go into the, you used to go into the car wash and there's realtor cars hanging up there and you pick a card up and you call a realtor. It's about hospitality. It's about making a connection with that customer. And it's about letting that customer know the, how important they are. You know, we're in an economy right now where we're coming out of COVID. You know, G, our, our, our GDP was down 31.4% last year, but it's coming back strong. It's coming back very strong. You know, and being in Florida, the, the benefits of Florida are astronomical. You know, we're in an economy right now when the elect, I want, I want to get back to Florida, but when, when the election happens, whether it's Trump, whether it's Biden, I believe we're going to have a booming stock market. There's trillions of dollars on the sidelines that need to go to work. You're going to see construction. You're going to see infrastructure. You're going to see new buildings going up all along the, the, the strip in Miami. You're going to see them going up in other areas of Florida. Florida is, Florida is the place to be as far as I'm concerned. You know, when you look at places like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, the tri-state area where everyone, everyone used to flee to and Florida was a place to go on vacation, uh, California, you know, these places can't survive anymore with the tax rates that are in place. You know, the, the, the governor of New Jersey just put in place a, a new tax law that not only do you have to pay 9% state tax, but if you make over $400,000, you have to pay an additional 10%. So you're paying 19% state tax. So why would I want to live there? Why would I want to penalize myself for being successful? Where do you go? You know where you go? You go to Florida. Florida is the place to be. And, and they're, they're, you know, we're talking about zero state tax. We're talking about 6% sales tax versus in some areas, six and a half, seven, up, upwards of 8% sales tax. And people are fleeing to Florida. It's, it's clear what's going on. When you go down there and you see the cranes and you see these properties being built and they're being built day in and day out and entitlements are being had, the, the, the state, the, the structure of the governmental body of Florida is set up properly. It's set up for growth. It's set up for, for uh, uh, upwardly mobile people who want to be involved in, in building their careers, growing and, 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 and building. You know, you have taxes, you have weather, you have quality of life. It's, it's clearly the place to be. So um, as a real estate agent, Clearly, you have to worry about what's going to happen in the economy, what's going to happen to the real estate market. The first thing you have to worry about is what's going to happen to your customer and how these things are affecting your customer. And yes, COVID hit, but you know, we're in, a, we're in a, a, a spot now where unemployment has recovered. People are back to work. Yeah, they're working from Zoom and they're working from home, but they're back to work. And they, you know, after, after an event like this, and it happened after 9-11, People want to go out and they want to, they don't want to just spend, they want to invest properly, but they want to put their money to work and they want to, they want to buy something that, that has a value, value, valuation on their balance sheet, but, but also a valuation to their family. 
And so as being a realtor in Florida, you're, you're, you have a perfect storm, no pun intended. You have uh, people who want to flee there for tax reasons. You have uh, buildings going up everywhere. So you have inventory that could be sold and that inventory is getting sold off, I understand. But, but there's more entitlements coming and there's more buildings being built. And on top of that, you're in an environment, you're in an economy where people want to go out and spend. I'm experiencing it in the car business. People come into my dealerships. They, they don't want to shop multiple dealerships because of COVID. They come in, they buy a car, they make a deal. Our gross margins are up. Just like in the real estate business, sales profits are up because people don't want to shop in multiple locations. They want to see one or two. They want to make their pick and they want to go. And, but they want to invest not only in the asset, but they want to invest in their family. And what, what's the benefit to their family? Because they're not going to be getting on an airplane and traveling. Hospitality and travel, it's going to take a while to come back because of COVID. So they want to invest in their families. So they want, they want properties like the Aquilina. That's what they want. They want properties like the Estates at Aquilina that have ice skating rings and boxing rings and bowling and, 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 and cigar rooms and places that they can go and spend time and enjoy with their family. So it's, it, you know, listen, I think it's a perfect storm what's going on in Miami. Um, and I think that, you know, it will continue to grow. I think the state of the economy is strong. The underlying foundation is very strong. The stock market, it looks in. It, it, it shows day after day. It, yes, you have its days when it goes down, but it's resilient. It continues to come back. Real estate, now, the, the valuations on real estate are going up every single day. Um, you know, if you look at, 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 obviously retail is being adjusted because of amazon.com. Everyone's getting packages to their homes and, and, and delivering. So if you're in the retail business, things aren't so, so bright in the real estate business. But the housing business, we have a housing shortage. And, you know, it's interesting because we have a housing shortage in the midst of a administration where the president of the United States has basically shut down immigration. What's going to happen if Biden gets in? Is it, you know, and I'm a, I'm a Trump supporter. Is it so bad when Biden gets in and he opens up uh, um, the, the borders and, P and immigration starts coming in and people start coming in, those people have to buy houses or they have to rent and the renters have to leave and go buy houses. So we're going to have a booming economy either way. I think everybody should gear up for it. I think everybody should be ready for it. You should be building your portfolios. You should be building your websites, your customer base, getting out there. And, and now is the time. Now is the time to set the foundation. The, we're not going down. We're going up. And, um, you know, and, and I, I think that you people in, in Miami are perfectly positioned. So with that being said, I want to leave it open to questions and answers. Um, but, you know, that's my take on the economy. And that's where I think things are going. And I think that, uh, you know, I think I think 2021 is going to be an amazing year. Thank you, Tom. That, what great insight and tips. Um, we appreciate that. And I really love what you said about hospitality. Um, because what we try to do at Aqualina is make every customer a raving fan. Yes. Um, so it's exactly what you're saying, provide something great for um, your customers. So, um, so tell us a little bit more about your background and how you came upon like customer service and that you realize customer service is number one. Where does well, that come from? It's interesting. When I started in the global logistics business, I realized that, you know, when I had to have uh, parts on site in one hour and two hour to support service contracts for medical and technology companies. And these were critical. You know, we're talking about hospitals being down. We're talking about banks being down, critical government operations being down. I realized that we needed to be able to service these customers and get them their parts, but it was more than just delivering a part. It was about making them satisfied and happy so that they can, they can, rave about us wherever they go. And our, and, and our business boomed because of it. And then when I got in the automobile business, I did the same. And I hired a hospitality expert who did nothing but work with our people to, to, un, to let them understand hospitality. And it's, re it's really, you know, it's a simple, it's a very simple, basic rule. And that is, how do you want to be treated? 
when you're in an environment, when you're in a restaurant, how do you want to be treated? And if you think about that and you treat the customer that way, you, you can't lose. It's, it's, it's a win-win. So I started in the global logistics business. I started at, at, at the young age of 16 with my first real estate deal. And yeah, yeah, and I started real estate. My father was always in real estate. My grandfather came from Italy and he was in real estate. So it was something I always loved and I grew up in it. And um, I, I just, I always loved real estate. And, and I got involved in it and I started building uh, apartment buildings and, and then it went into medical buildings and then shopping centers. And, and, and now I manage my own real estate portfolio, build, develop, um, you know, and do a lot of, of, of projects. But listen, real estate is the greatest hedge in, in the history of America. It's, it, you know, it's the greatest, it's one of the greatest investments that anyone could ever make. It doesn't have the volatility of what, what the stock market has. Yes, you can make money in the stock market, but it doesn't have that volatility. And listen, it's the old adage, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. I love what you said too, about how you visited 30 properties yes. in one day and you saved the best for last. <laughs> well, that, that was by accident actually. And it happened that way, but there was a reason for it. And, you know, I wasn't going to give up when I, when I, when I set these appointments up, I wanted to see every building and I wanted to see the differences and, and it's all about a feel. It's about how you feel in that environment. And when you walk into the Aquilina, you, you, you feel like you've arrived. You feel like you made it in life because everybody's swarming around you, you know, trying to get you what you need and serve you. And it's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. That's great. So tell us about living at Aquilina. How often do you come? Is well, this your I'll second or third home? Or, yeah, it, 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 it. It's a third home. I'm down there probably in the winter, uh, I would say, every, every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the summer, I try and get down every other weekend. But little by little, I'm migrating. I, I want to make my residence Florida, obviously, for tax reasons. Yes. Um, and it's going to happen. But, you know, listen, I, I, I love the Aquilina. When I get there and you just arrive and you look out over the ocean and you look at the, the landscaping and the way that, that, that every, despite, despite the, the hospitality, just, just the properties and the way they're built. And you sit in that pool and you look at the, the, the infinity edge pool and you're overlooking the ocean. You, you almost say, I don't need to go to the Bahamas. I don't need to go to an island. I mean, I, I, this is it. It has it all. And it's all right there and it's clean and it's neat and, and it's safe for your family. It's, 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 it's really a place that, that, and you know, it sounds like, you know, it almost sounds like I'm being paid to do a commercial, but I'm not, um, I, I really believe this in my heart. It's, 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 it's one of the nicest places is in, in, in not only in the country, I think in the world. Thank you. Yeah. And when you're mentioning um, about the taxes, yeah, we have this saying home is where the taxes are not. Yes, <laughs> so that's exactly. Not yes. <laughs> and, you know, it's interesting because when I switch, when I switch my residence, you know, I, I it, it almost pays for me to own the home there. Wow. And, you know, and, and listen, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to, to get into the Aquilina Estates. You know, I was early in and I was working with Jules and, and he told me about the property and I went to see it and I went to see, the, you know, the designs and what they're doing there. And it, 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 there's nothing like it. There is nothing like it. Thank you. So this question came in from um, Tani. I think I'm saying that name right. Tani or Tony, Jean Bellis. And they would like to know how to attract and build a luxury real estate business and clientele. And also, how would you do this in a new city? Well, interesting. Uh, you know, obviously, it's, it's real estate, real estate from an agency standpoint, if you're a real estate agent, and it's, it's interesting because I know a lot of real estate agents. I'm in the business. I'm in the real estate business. I know I know a lot of people in that, that own real estate that are brokers. So I understand the business very well. You know, it's about relationships. You have to be out there building relationships with people that are wealthy, successful, who, who can network. Networking is very important because one person hands your card to another person who hands your card to another person. And before you know it, they say, that's the person to go to. They'll take care of you. And there goes the hospitality connection. They'll take care of you. You have to take care of your customer. You need to be available when when they're available, not when you want to be available. 
it's day or night. It doesn't matter. You know, when I, when I first started in business, it's, it's interesting. When somebody would call me with a delivery, I would be like, it doesn't matter what time of night it is. We're going to do it. It doesn't matter. You know, and it, it's when I closed on my Lexus store, I bought my first Lexus store. I'll never forget this. And it was a Friday night. Uh, the closing was late. I, I got back to, to the Lexus store from the lawyer's office and they were closing up. And I had just met all the employees and I, the general manager was there and he was locking the door and there was some people looking in the window and it was an older couple and they were looking in the window and the general manager said, no, we're, we're, I said, we're closed. We're closed. I said, no, 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 no. There's new ownership. We're not closed. I said, let them in. And they bought a car. So that's what it's about. It's about going that extra mile, but networking is important. You have to network. You have to get your name out there and you have to build trust within a, a group of people who can spread your word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, so the current times we're in, very difficult times. So difficult. what lessons have you learned from the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, well the, the first is obviously everyone, everyone, whether you're in a restaurant business, the hotel business, the car business, it re doesn't really the real estate business. Everyone was in this position where they were forced to furlough people. Businesses were shut down. Doors were closed. You were forced governmentally to shut down. And you had no choice but to lay off people to, to cut your expenses and payroll. So what we've learned in that process is by bringing the people back is that we didn't really need them all mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. So we brought back 80% of the people. When we got to 80%, we realized that we're servicing the customers and doing the job with less people. And, you know, that doesn't sound too good, right? Those people mm -hmm. lost their jobs. But in the reality of it is, is when you're running a company, it's, it's a very interesting f philosophy and thought process. And sometimes you have to, you have to really sit down and think about this is you just, you save the other 80% is, is really what you're trying to do. So you cut your finger off to save your arm, but you know, we, listen, we, we have a placement service. We went out and helped those 20% people find jobs, get them into other locations. But what we've learned is that you have to run lean and mean. And when you run lean and mean and you keep your expenses down, you can make a profit. And I tell my people all the time that work for me, I tell my employees, do not mistake activity for profit. You need mm. to make a profit. If you're selling a piece of real estate and there's a commission, you need to make a profit. Everybody wants to negotiate the commissions and they want to push their commissions down. It's great. You can negotiate a commission. I can negotiate a, a, how much I'm going to make on a car deal. When, when one of my uh, people sells a car, but at the end of the day, you still need to make a profit. There's expenses, there's overhead, and the, the lower you keep your overhead, the more profit you'll make. That is the lesson that everyone should learn. Okay, thank you. Um, so going back to real estate, yes. um, what do you think is the biggest challenge that we're experiencing at the moment in the real estate industry? Well, interesting, you know, we're, we're, first of all, I have to add something that I didn't mention before, and that is we're in, a, we're in an interest rate environment that is historically, historically low. I mean, when you can go and borrow 30-year money at 3% and 15-year money at 2.5%, and you can put that into a piece of real estate, whether it be at the Aquilina, whether it be an investment property, whatever it may be, that's not risk. That's opportunity. That's opportunity when, I mean, you, you know, that is, that is free money. And when you could use that to your advantage and invest in a property that's going to escalate in value and you're, and you're paying down debt, but you're only paying two and a half, three percent interest. Those are historical lows. That, that's one of the things that I wanted to add to the, to the boom of the real estate business. If you want to ask me what the challenges are in the real estate business, I think it's entitlements. I think, I think we're living in a world right now where municipalities are struggling because tax dollars kind of stopped with COVID, right? Everybody stopped paying their taxes and, and furloughed their taxes on real estate. Um, expenses had to be cut for municipalities. And they're, they're in this environment now where they, they didn't cut their budgets. They need to cut their budgets and they need to make budget. And when they're in this environment where they need to make budget, 
the alternative is to raise taxes um, or approve more properties that they can title to, to bring tax dollars in. And I think that's where, where, where the rub is and that's where the challenge is, is to get the, the thought process of the municipalities to move these projects through faster, get, get past the red tape and get them approved faster so the tax dollars can come in. And I think they're starting to see that. You know, I mentioned before the demise of retail. I was a big retail guy. I owned shopping centers all over the place and I sold them off just in time. Um, better to be lucky than good. But the, the um, you know, we're, we're in a world now where there's a lot of properties that are gonna be repositioned. You have retail properties that are vacant you know, shopping centers. What do you do with these properties? You have office buildings that are going to start becoming, you know, vacant because people are working from home and Zoom. Right. The world has changed. So what do you do with these properties and how do you reposition them? You know, they're, they're going to have to be repositioned into residential properties. And, and the municipalities don't get that, but they're starting to see it. They're starting to realize, wait a minute, I, I, I can't force someone to make an office building when they can't rent it. Mm -hmm. I can't force someone to make a shopping center when there's no tenants. So they're starting to get that and there's, and, 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 and there's going to be a turn. And I don't know where it is. I don't think it's there yet. It may be probably in, in 21 when the economy starts coming back, but there's going to be a turn where mis municipalities realize, hey, I got to turn these properties. I got to get them redeveloped. I got to start getting the tax dollars through the door because we have expenses. We have school systems that we need to support and keep going and, and people that live in the township that need services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so for our real estate brokers all on this call, a lot of their customers are saying, we want to wait. We don't want to close now. We want to wait until the election. So what should they be telling their customers so they can close right now? Well, listen, I think, listen, everybody, you know, most people live in fear. They're living in fear of the election. They're living in fear of the economy. And as a real estate broker, I think I would, I, you know, I can only do it. I tell you what I would do. I, I would be selling the low interest rates. If, 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 if the Democrats get in and Biden gets in, interest rates are going to go up. Why would you want to take that risk? That's a bigger risk. If you're, if you're paying, if you can get 3% now and they go up to 5%, that's a big jump in your payment. Get in there now, lock it in and get it closed. You know, the, the election is not going to change anything. As I said before, under the Democrats, I'm a, Trump, I'm a big Trump supporter. I'm a friend of President Trump's. I, I can tell you right now that under the Democrats, under, under, under Bill Clinton's presidency, we had one of the greatest economies in the history of the country. So the, so the economy is not going to crash because the Democrats get in. Mm, okay, good. Um, so this question also came in. What will you tell young families moving from the Northeast about making the transition to South Florida? And how will it be beneficial to them? Oh, I think, I think it's really simple. I think they should just pack up and move. Just get out of here. Just get to South Florida as fast as you can. And, and I say that facetiously because I mean it. I really, I mean, the benefits are, are quality of life. The quality of life in South Florida is, is, is second to none. It, 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 it's just absolutely, I mean, it's, it's, it's every, listen, you're there, you live it every day. The realtors that are on this, on this, this uh, Zoom understand they're there every day. They're there for a reason. It's gorgeous. And the quality of life is second to none. You, you don't have to deal with snow. You don't have to deal with the issues that other areas of the country have to deal with, with, with earthquakes. Yeah, you have hurricanes once in a while, but mm -hmm. South, South Florida is the place to be. You know, yes, clearly anybody that moves from an area, there's a transition. And, and obviously with families, it becomes harder and children to get them adjusted. But, you know, I'm not so sure that I know one child that wouldn't want to come home from school when their backyard is a swimming pool. <laughs> True. Agreed. I have two boys my own. I 100% agree. Um, so what has helped you to get where you are? You're so influential and effective and in the forefront. So what advice can you give to all of us? Well, the advice is take risk. Take quantified risk, analyze your risk, think about what you're doing, but at the end of the day, you got to take that risk. You can, you can sit on the decision all day long. And if you never make the decision, you're never going to get to the next level. You have to take that risk. And you know what? Sometimes it's you'll figure it out. 
because when you get out there and you take that risk, things come at you. And when you, when you learn how to figure them out, it's, it's my analogy would be is, you know, you're in the army and when you're out there and, and you get out in the field and people are, are attacking you, the first day you get out there, you think you're going to die. And then all of a sudden you realize how to protect yourself and how to do things and how to get out of these situations and, and move your, your ball forward down the field so that you could score a touchdown. You have to take risk. You have to get out there and, and uh, you know, listen, in the real estate business, I always say my daughter just graduated college. And Congratulations. That's great. Her major was entrepreneurship and a minor in business and finance. <clears throat> wow. And she's doing real estate development. That's what she wants to do. And I don't know where she got that from. But <laughs> you must be I proud. <laughs> I am very proud. I'm working with her every day. So I tell her, you have, listen, you can analyze a property up and down. You can run the numbers on a spreadsheet 10 times, 20 times. But there comes a point when you have to say, I'm taking the risk. I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure this out. And I, you know, and, I, and as a realtor, and I give this advice to my own daughter, who hasn't taken it yet, by the way, is you're in a better position than anyone else. You have the inside track on properties that haven't even hit the market yet. You're taking the listing. So get out there, look at properties, run the numbers, whether it's the Aquilina, buying a, a condo as an investment, as a rental property, or whether it's a multifamily or whatever, you're, take the risk, make the investment. Interest rates are at all time low. It's, it's the greatest in inflation hedge of the history of the country. And it's the only, it is the only business where someone else is paying down your debt. Mm. Mm -hmm. It sounds easy, <laughs> but it's well, hard. That is, nothing's, it's so easy. hard. nothing's easy, but it's yeah. a matter of you got to have the desire and you got to want right. it. Yes. Right. So is there anything else that you want to share with the brokers that don't call? Any other important tips or insights? You gave us so much already. No, I listen, I think, you know, if, if, if I weren't a car dealer and I weren't doing real estate development, I'd probably come to South Florida and be a real estate broker because it, it's, it's amazing. You're outside all day, you're walking customers around, but I think you need to take advantage of that. We're, again, we're still in a great economy. Interest rates are at an all-time low. You have people fleeing to South Florida because of taxes. You have beautiful properties being built. You need to take advantage of that. You need to, you know, as I, as, as I tell my people in the car business and I, it, it is when we have sales meetings and, 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 I, and I speak at them is if you're going to make 10 calls today, before you go home, make 11, one more call, just one more call. And that one call could be the customer that's going to buy the car. That one call could be the customer that's going to buy the condo, buy the property and hand your business cards to 10 other people. All right, I love it. Yes. <laughs> Positivity. That is great. Oh, well, thank you, Tom. That was incredible. Some people thank are adding into me. the chat saying they really enjoyed it. Thank so you thank you that. so much for your time because I know you're so busy and I've watched so many of your TV segments well, on Fox News and Inside Edition. And wow, you. you are highly sought after. Thank you. So. And it's a pleasure. And it's, a, it's, it's always a pleasure to talk about the Aquilina because I believe it is, it is the best property in South Florida. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank well, we look forward to seeing you. I hope I see you yes. on, your next, on your next visit. Thank you again. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. Please stay safe um, at your homes. And we will see you for next month's Aqua Talk. Bye, everyone. Thank you.